drones are completely changing warfare. I've talked many times about future military hardware and weapons, stealth, air defenses, hypersonics, but these are fundamentally changing things right now. And the craziest part is that, unlike stealth, hypersonics, or other advanced weapons, drones aren't limited to just the superpowers with massive defense budgets. Any country could afford them, and in massive numbers. Even non-state actors can afford them. They are well within any budget. It's real important to use a VPN for numerous reasons. Hackers, websites tracking your data, possibly governments watching your internet use, and the list goes on. NordVPN is the best. I've worked with them many times on my channel. They're a great company, and it's much easier to promote a company when that company is the best. They are pretty much constantly ranked the best by technology experts, including PCMag. And they just won the 2020 Best VPN Award. They have every feature you need, have thousands and thousands of servers all across the world, and is extremely easy to use. Just open the program, click the country you want to connect through, and you're all set. And if you use my link, you get 68% off your subscription, plus an additional month for free. And if you don't like it, they have a 30-day money-back guarantee. Go to nordvpn.org slash covercabal or use coupon code covercabal, no space. Using that link or code will get you that discount and also really help support this channel at the same time. Many nations have been working on drone technology for a long time. One of the earliest and most famous date back over 100 years ago, the Kettering Bug. And now today, anyone can own one. You can get a decent one for a couple hundred bucks. Previously, any ability to conduct precision strikes required millions of dollars worth of guidance systems, aircraft, or huge expensive cruise missiles, but not anymore. A nation can easily buy several hundred of these $200 drones, strap a small warhead onto them, and send them into attack and destroy a $20 million aircraft or radar. And we've seen this happen. Saudi Arabian oil facilities were attacked back in 2019 by numerous drones. Russia's had to deal with swarms of drones attacking their airbase in Syria. And now we are seeing them used extensively in Azerbaijan and Armenia with pretty incredible effect. These aren't going away. They're going to become more and more prevalent. They are small, easy to conceal, can quickly be deployed in large numbers, extremely cheap, and if done right, difficult to trace the origin of where and who launched them. We normally think of military drones as being the big, large, predator-style ones, armed with things like Hellfire missiles. But many nations themselves are equipping their military with small drones that individuals can operate. They can give a quick and incredible view of the battlefield to soldiers fighting, enabling them to see where the enemy is without being at risk themselves. Or you could potentially launch dozens at once. China's been showing off trucks carrying dozens of drones that it can launch. Either armed with a warhead or just a camera, they will be incredibly useful on the battlefield. Future conflicts will certainly see dozens, possibly hundreds of these drones in the skies flying around overhead, both gathering intelligence on the enemy and attacking with small warheads, possibly both. And those are key, being able to provide real-time information on what the enemy is up to, where they are, what they're doing, and also many times having the option to then attack. We've seen things like Israel's Harpy and Harup, which are drone slash loitering munitions, able to gather intelligence, send back live video, then also attack. We saw this happen in Syria when it took out a Panzer. It's also been reported, but not confirmed, that they also destroyed or damaged one or more radars of the S-300 in Armenia. I hesitate to even say that though, because there's so much propaganda going back and forth there that it might not be true, but it still shows that these small drones are a very real threat to the large, expensive air defense systems. And the real interesting change coming will be artificial intelligence. Some current and future drones will not even need an operator. They can be programmed to identify enemy targets and decide itself how to carry out a mission. Even be able to adapt when an unexpected threat appears. We are already seeing this happen to some extent with the larger recon drones used for the US, but both large and small drones are absolutely going to be operating this way in the next few years. You could simply tell one to go out and attack a target, then say if it suddenly detects an S-300, it can decide itself to switch tasks and take it out if needed. And the fact that you don't need to have a cockpit for a pilot or further limited by any of the limitations of humans, such as the need for life support or G-tolerance, means these things have the potential to eventually be much more superior to manned aircraft, and significantly cheaper. And price is really the biggest limiting factor right now in every military across the world. Submarines are costing billions of dollars. Aircraft carriers 10 times that. Modern tanks with advanced armor and targeting systems are extremely expensive compared to what they used to be and current 5th gen aircraft are easily costing over $100 million each. That is crazy. No one can afford to support a military anywhere close to the size of World War II numbers with the current skyrocketing cost of hardware. But drones, large or small, they're going to cost much, much less. 
you could easily buy 20 or 30 quadcopters for the same price it costs to equip a single US soldier, whose equipment alone today is costing over $17,000 each. This boom in drone technology is both terrifying and good at the same time. You can easily imagine this technology getting into the wrong hands or turning on humans, and there have been several movies depicting things like this. But at the same time, we can get to a point in the future where drones are just fighting other drones. No deaths, just machines destroying each other till someone runs out of them or runs out of money. Future conflicts could potentially have drastically lower numbers of loss of life, both military and civilian. Either way, it's the future. There's no changing that. The technology is there, and any side that decides not to embrace it will be at a major disadvantage. You are just done. You can't compete. So there is no going back. So the question is, how can you stop them? Conventional air defense systems like Patriot and the S-400 are no good. We saw this back in 2017, when Saudi Arabia fired a $3 million Patriot missile at a $300 quadcopter. You can easily see how that's a huge problem when you begin to multiply that hundreds of times. For the larger ones, similar in size to manned aircraft, it could work, but not when you're facing massive numbers of tiny drones, so you need another option. Short range systems and Sea Whiz could be more effective, things like Pantsir, Tor, Avenger, etc. But those will likely never be a full solution, as they are still pretty expensive and could quickly run out of missiles or ammo. Really, any kinetic weapons are just going to cost too much and be too limited when facing large swarms of drones. This is where directed energy weapons are going to come in. Lasers, microwaves, even jamming or hacking. We know Russia has already been developing these types of defenses, and we've seen a lot of prototypes and demonstrations from US companies like Raytheon. They are getting there, but it's still going to be several years before they really mature. Right now, they are pretty slow, and cannot fire quickly enough and shift over to engage another target. They are going to need to be extremely quick, as there's going to be a lot of targets to take out, and you aren't going to have much warning that they're coming. Just like sea skimming and low-flying cruise missiles, their low altitude means that they're hidden from view until they're nearly right on top of you. And really, this is a problem not just for the military, but also civilian life. Airports are constantly running into problems of drones flying too close, threatening the safety of commercial airliners. So such defense systems will be useful. At the same time, focusing on the US at least, we often see a lot of prototypes being designed and built only to get canceled a few years later. This has happened numerous times, more than I can count. The US doesn't tend to really kick into gear until something happens, forcing it to. Like with hypersonics. They designed and tested a few different systems a decade ago, but nothing really came of it. It wasn't until Russia and China began to show off their own that the US really started development in hypersonic missiles in earnest. Russia and China, on the other hand, they tend to be somewhat better at recognizing the importance of new weapons, and they don't hesitate to rush full speed ahead in developing them. So, it's going to be an interesting next few years. This isn't going away. It's here right now being used, and will be even more in the near future and ever after.